One of the basic principles were taught in the Dharma, atahi atano nato. The self is its own mainstay. But that can be a secure mainstay only if you train, train yourself. Because the mind in its natural state tends to wander all around. We complain about things in the world changing. Our mind changes a lot faster. We complain that things in the world are unreliable. The untrained mind can be extremely unreliable. So we have to train it. We train it in virtue. We train it in concentration, discernment. We train it in generosity to begin with. When you learn that there's a lot of happiness that comes from giving things away. This is counterintuitive to most children. They're happy when they get things. But as you get more mature, you realize there's a lot more long-term happiness that comes out of giving something away. Somebody gives you two Cokes, you drink both of them, well that's it. The memory of two Cokes next week is not going to be all that special. But you take one of those Cokes and you give it to somebody else, then you have a better memory, the memory of your own generosity. And that lifts the heart, lifts the mind. So you train it in generosity to get, enlarge your sense of what true happiness is. Then you follow through with virtue, realizing that you don't want to harm anybody. And in harming others, you're harming yourself. So abstain from all different kinds of harm that are forbidden by the precepts, forbidden by the principles of right action, right speech, right livelihood. And then you get the mind in concentration. That's when the mind begins to become more steady and reliable. You tell it to stay with one thing, and after a lot of adjustment, a lot of back and forth, the mind finally gets used to being with one thing. Then it becomes more reliable. But even then it's not totally reliable, because it still, still changes its mind. They talk about the Brahmas who dwell for long, long times on rapture. And then they get tired of the rapture, and they fall back down again. So you want to find something better than rapture and better than pleasure. You want to find, you want to find freedom for the mind. And you do that through discernment, seeing where you're causing yourself suffering, where you don't have to, and how you can stop. And in stopping the activities that cause suffering, you get more sensitive to more subtle levels of suffering inside. So subtle it's hard to call them suffering. It's more like disturbance, stress. But you keep on pursuing this question and find the mind opens up to a true freedom. That's when it really can depend on itself. And that's when you do have a mainstay. Prior to that time, you have to lean on the Buddha, lean on the Dharma, lean on the Sangha. You borrow the Buddha's wisdom. You depend on the Sangha to teach you, to give you good examples. But then as you internalize these things, then they become part of you, part of your re refuge inside. And that's when you can be solid and secure, live in this world in a way that's safe. In other words, you don't cause harm to anyone else. You don't cause harm to yourself. People may come and do things to you physically or to your material things, but you've got something inside that nobody else can touch. That's when you're really secure.